Hi, my name is John. And I'm Lloyd. And we are the hosts of Pine of Comics, a podcast all about pop culture. Lloyd, what do we do sometimes on Pine of Comics that people might want to know about before they listen? Well, sometimes we drop spoilers and sometimes we swear like sailors. So if you're okay with that stuff, listen in and enjoy the show. Pickup. They won't touch us till we get over the border. Hey, Billy, give me a way out of this hole. The Ariel says we are cut off. The only way out of here is that valley that leads to the east. I wouldn't wish that on the broke dick dog. All right, welcome back to another episode of Pine of Comics. My name is John. And I'm Lloyd. And he's Lloyd, and we are here today to talk about the 35th anniversary of a movie that is special to my heart, and I think it's special probably to all of everybody here's heart, because we were all probably 14-year-old boys at one point. Anyways, (laughs) uh, we are here to talk about the 35th anniversary of Predator. That's right, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, the (laughs) giant space alien that likes to hunt hunt things and kill them and and make bone trophies out of them. Uh, With us tonight... So many times, so many shows. I don't know. The percentage is like 78% of all of our shows now. Scary Larry Dwyer. Larry, what's going on, man? hey I don't know. Nothing. hey No. <laughs> now, Larry, right off the bat, yeah. uh, Predator, was this something like when you were a kid you were into? Did you find it later? When did oh, you no. I saw, I saw it when it came out. Uh, I did not see it in the, in the theater uh, like some people I know, but I saw it as soon as it came out on video. Okay. And Larry, fell in love. today you brought along a guest. You said, I got the perfect guy for this show. Uh, so why don't you introduce our guest this time? Uh, it's it's Sean, spelled the same way, but it's not Shawnee Mac. We all know Shawnee Mac. We got a different Sean. Who do we got, Larry? It's our good Is friend. Is that the other Sean, Larry? Sean McLaughlin, yeah. yeah, he's, yeah on, okay. he's on the show a lot. Oh, good. Um. But we don't like him very much, <laughs> so we don't invite him anymore. But hopefully, you will take his place. We're all, you know, we're all counting on you. No pressure. Uh, we've got Sean Brickley of Horror Nerd Online, and of uh, my band Ig Ig Fits. Oh, okay, you're in the hey, Ig Fits. Yeah, I play bass in that band. All right, all right. I try. I try to. Larry, Larry, Larry will explain further on that. One. Yeah. It's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> at this point, he's just he's there, so it happens. I can be. He's serviceable. Yep. <laughs> he's the it, best. It, he's a regular Cliff Burton. Ig Fitz, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so he's he was killed in a in a tour bus accident and then like brought back to life play, to play bass for your, uh, your every Mr. cover band every, every, every Halloween. Year, every Halloween, he falls out the bus window and the bus crushes him. <laughs> That's yeah. so fucking crazy. But then he's alive the next day. It's like Kenny from South Park. It's like That's, a weird Twilight Zone. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't want to make light of the Cliff Burton <laughs> situation, but like you talk about like the crazy deaths. You know, you get tossed out of the out of the tour bus, you're probably dead. Yeah. And then it fucking lands on you. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That's brutal. Yeah. And I <laughs> that think brutal. that was supposed to be Lars's bunk. God. No, there's no justice. <laughs> there's no, no justice fucking, in this world. No fucking justice. Uh, you know yeah. how many other drummers could have been in that band? Yeah. Oh, that is true. That is sad, but true. Uh, so, Sean, oh, I see horror. what you did. I see what you did there. <laughs> horror, horror nerd online. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit? Because uh, it sounds pretty straightforward. I went on the other day. I checked out. It's a very cool site. Tell everybody out there all about it. it. It was something more for me to just you know get like. Eh. I used a database. I created a database just to make posts that were all uniform. And I felt that that was such a nerdy thing to do that, you know, horror nerd, why not, you know, use that as a slogan. And it just, it's, you know, to let people know like this movie's coming out and it's a lot of the more under, like not underground, but like uh, titles that aren't, um, you know, you won't see on Amazon or, you know, readily like advertised, you know, outwardly, but you know, the, the mainstream <clears> stuff and the, on the other stuff um, I've been doing, I've been trying to get back into doing reviews, but it's just really hard because I have a seven year old and he takes up nearly all of my time now. So, but yeah, I mean, check it out. It's, I'm definitely going to be getting more into it. And I've, I've took a, about a month off from it doing the, the past week, the month or so, but I'm getting back into it now and I appreciate you having me on and taking a look at it. 
Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Hey, Thank and you. thanks for sharing that with me, John, that website. Well, this is literally like two days ago. Two days, Larry two tells days me, John, I look at the website. Well, oh, oh, look at that. He calls me out on the fucking show, everybody. Live. <laughs> Live. Yeah. Live. Hey, All this, right, is so, new, this is the new manster. So, we, yeah, apparently the new manster is like the old Sir John, and I kicked him yeah. off the fucking yeah, I'm show. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's, cha- he's changed. He's, he's changed different. a little bit. He's yeah. changed. For the All right. You are you are better. You're the man. What is it, man stater? Okay, predator. I get it. Took me a second to get it. Lloyd never has a second cup of coffee at home. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we're here to talk about Predator, uh, 1987. As a matter of fact, June 12th of 87, directed by a guy named John McTiernan. Uh, this guy uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, he had a good run. The year after this, he made Die Hard. So I mean, right off the bat, he's got two of the biggest, probably most well received. Um, action movies of all time under his belt, right in a row. Uh, 1990, Hunt for Red October. A couple other things here and there, but let's not forget, he did direct and also go to jail for 2002's Rollerblade remake. Uh, if you don't know the story about why John McTiernan went to jail for that, go listen to our Rollerblade uh, Trash Ball. Tolerable or Treasure episode. Uh, but it, you mean? Oh, Rollerball. I'm Rollerball. sorry. Rollerball. Yeah. Pardon me. Pardon That's me. okay. No. Yeah. I don't even want to think about this movie anymore. That's why I'm saying Blade uh, out loud. It, it had to do with the fact that he uh, he wiretapped a producer and uh, he ended up going to jail for it. Yeah. Really, I totally shit. forgot he did that movie, too. Yeah. I, I think he wishes he forgot he did that movie. Sure. Um, <laughs> this was written by a couple of guys, a couple of brothers, Jim and John Thomas. Uh, let's see. They did. Uh, we actually just talked with Larry a couple months ago about Wild Wild West. Uh, they wrote the story for that. They wrote the story for Executive Decision uh, with Kurt Russell and a very brief uh, Steven Seagal moment. They wrote Mission to Mars and they wrote Behind Enemy Lines. I had I, it sounded familiar. That's Owen Wilson when he was a pilot stuck uh, behind enemy lines. It's one of those wow. movies you, for, you forget about. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm wow. stuck. I'm stuck here in the USSR. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Their original uh, screenplay was entitled Hunter. Uh, Predator was thrown on later on. It's kind of a long story. I would say just look up and into it. But last year, Marvel Comics was supposed to start producing Predator comic books because uh, Disney purchased 20th Century Fox. And they had to stop because Jim and uh, and John Thomas uh, sued everybody involved uh, mm-hmm. trying to uh, hold on to the rights to it. Uh, oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So Well, Disney purchased everything basically yeah. in the world disney owns monsters old personality the good one <laughs> they, they that. Oh, i see what you did there yeah. good one good one and they're holding it in lock and key all right so uh, this was filmed uh all over mexico uh jalisco palenque and it was uh april 14th of 1986 uh, through it looks like from what I can find out July of uh, 86 and there was a, a three day break or a four day break in the middle of filming uh on a Friday afternoon they finished filming And Joel Silver, who is the producer, who is, if you know movies, you know, he was the guy that he did all these action films, Lethal Weapon. And he was kind of that guy at that time. Mm -hmm. Basically, basically you had an action movie. You got Joel Silver as a producer. He was like Jerry Bruckheimer before Jerry Bruckheimer. He was Joel Silver. Uh, So, yeah, on a Friday afternoon, they finished filming. filming. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger got on Joel Silver's private jet. Flew to Hyannisport, uh, Massachusetts. The next day, got married to Maria Shriver. Uh, <laughs> took two days off for a honeymoon and flew back and finished Predator. And in that meantime, while they did that, they just shot all the beef or a lot of the beef footage. So, yeah. just uh, to give just to give you a, a little taste of what he produced: uh, Lethal Weapon, Predator, Die Hard, Roadhouse, Die Hard Two, uh, Ricochet, Last Boy Scout. Demolition Man. As I said, if you had an action movie in the you know mid to late eighties and early nineties, Joel Silver's name was probably on it. He's been famously parodied, parodied several times. True Romance. That character, uh, uh, Saul, Saul something. I can't remember his name. Yeah, uh, was based, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, on Joel Silver. Uh, famously hot tempered guy. You know, <laughs> little little like short guy. All right. So the uh, uh, the original concept was based completely out of a random remark oh. that someone said. You know, this one monster. What was it? Uh, something about Rocky. So after Rocky Four, Rocky when, Four, yeah, when Rocky defeats Drago, uh, some I guess it was like a, a like a, a reviewist or a reviewer or a newspaper columnist uh, just said at this point all Rocky has to do is fight an alien. Yeah, and Jim and John Thomas were like, "Fuck yes, we're gonna write yeah, that story." Let's write that story. <laughs> <laughs> the original, the original story, Hunter, uh, the original version of the screenplay was only going to be 
Schwarzenegger's character, like as like a one man army sent mm-hmm. off on this mission, and then he was going to fight the predator through the whole thing. Schwarzenegger himself said, "This is going to work better if you've got a crew." And as the predator starts to pop him off one after another, so obviously he knew he a little right. bit about something. He was totally right. He was totally right. All right, so Manster, why don't we talk about the cast a little bit? There's a lot of muscle, a lot of sinew. Uh, I want to hear who's in this thing. <coughs> oh, man! Whoa! Oh <coughs> shit! Too much whiskey there, uh, Manster. No, no whiskey. Oh, uh, no. Not anymore. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> all right, so we got Arnold Schwarzenegger as Major. Alan Dutch Schaefer, leader of a private military team, basically hired by the U.S. to do uh, special missions. Dutch, with a fucking huge arm. Oh, my God. That bicep was massive. Big guy. He's known as a big guy. (laughs) He is. Yeah, I guess they were, they wanted somebody with an uh, Olympian, uh, what was it, an Olympic physique. I guess it was written. Well, they got it. Of course, he was Mr. Olympia, so it works. They certainly got it. Yeah. Then we have Carl Weathers as uh, Al Dillon. You Dutch son is, of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, his Vietnam War buddy, now a CIA operative, uh, basically responsible for planning and execution of the mission, of the mission, which was really a ruse. Yep. It's an elaborate ruse. Nice dogs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no shit. Right. You want me to wait? No, they're because the sound. sound Get, they'll go. They'll calm down. Give me right. 25, 20, 40 minutes. <laughs> then we have Elpedia Carrillo. Did I say that right? I'm sorry. That sounds great. It. No, that yeah. sounds great. As yeah. uh, Anna Gonzalez, uh, member of the communist guerrilla force operating in Guatemala. Uh, she's captured. And apparently she was the only one spared because she wasn't carrying a weapon. She doesn't touch a weapon. Right. Hmm. Except her face is a weapon. No, you know what? Oh, I gotta be. I gotta be honest. This this is the first viewing I've had ever where I was like, I don't know, man. She's not bad. Like, uh, no, before, no, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean a good one? I didn't mean negatively. Oh. Really? Come on. I don't know. Well, I mean, man, I think just Floyd. Like, I think you were being kind of rude. Right? No, know. not at all. Not intended. Sorry. You don't Sorry usually came out that way. You don't usually refer to somebody's face as a weapon in a positive light. No, definitely not. <sighs> definitely not. You misunderstood. All right, my fault. I'm so misunderstood. This is like, Lloyd, Lloyd, this is like if you said, you know what? <laughs> you smell wonderful tonight. You smell of the richest whale fart. Like it, mm-hmm. it just doesn't. It doesn't work in a good way. You know, <laughs> <Okay>. it doesn't. <laughs> nice. I've never heard that one before. All right, then we have Bill Duke as uh, Sergeant Mac Elliott. Fucking Duke. Oh, yeah. With the with the beautiful white eyes. Oh my god. I love that guy. Yeah. Good lord. Yeah. yeah. He's me and Shawnee, me and Shawnee Mac were just talking about him the other day at his role in um, Menace to Society. Remember, he was the cop that was interrogating. Um, I haven't seen name? that in a long time. Oh, it's just a, a great time. scene. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's just uh, a great scene. He tricks the kid into admitting that uh, he he had he had been lying the whole time. But it's mm-hmm. a, it's a great scene. Yeah, he's basically the machine gunner of the group. Good friends with Blaine. I was just going to say over there. <laughs> up, up, up in them trees beyond the trees <laughs> you know you know the whole razor thing was actually his he he just started doing that and he they kept it in it. the movie yeah, yeah. yeah that's good stuff I, every time i see this movie now we're all men right and we've all we all have to shave and yeah. we all have shaved i i'm the kind of guy i don't shave much I, I always have a beard because i always get irritated very easily how was he not just covered in in like razor like razor bumps, bumps? yeah they're, they're in uh, sean let, let me ask you if you're in 190 degree temperature mexican heat and you're using a razor on your already perfectly shaven skin up and down your face to like wipe sweat off are you going to get some kind of burn i i would Oh, definitely. Especially one of the, I mean, it looked like one of those disposable razors and this was a 1987 disposable razor. Yeah, I mean, you saw how easily he snapped that against his skin. Like, I mean, you know, he's, he's, I don't know how he doesn't look worse than he does. Yeah. Like, I can answer. I can answer the question. Oh, it's excuse- a movie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's a movie. <laughs> it's the backside of the razor. I don't think Bill Duke walks around in real life rubbing that razor on his face. I know. It's just such a weird, like, it's such a weird character trait. It works, though. It works. It does. It does yeah. work. It certainly does work. It's like a toothpick in the mouth. They all kind of had their own thing, right? Schwarzenegger had his cigar, which is his real life thing. Uh, Duke, you know, Carl Weathers, I did he, he might've had the American flag uh, trunks on. I'm not sure. Underneath <laughs> his pants. Yeah. yeah I'm positive. Uh, Duke Lane had his, his uh... Duke had his razor. One of them had the comic book. One was reading Sergeant rock. Uh, yeah. Shane, right. Shane, uh, uh, yeah. Hawkins, um, yeah. 
Ventura had his fucking Shaw, you his know, Shaw. He had his tobacco. They all had like their their thing. That was that Shane Black with the comic book. I the think comic, yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they all had their. They all had, the Predator had his, you know, fucking skull necklace. They all had. <laughs> they all had their thing. The right? other trait. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then you got Richard Chavez as Jorge or George. I don't know Jorge Pancho. Pancho, Pancho Ramirez, explosive ex- expert, specializes always, in heavy ordnance. Oh. Oh, it's one of my favorite lines in the entire movie is, is uh, after he gets hit with the tree and they're they're trying to escape and they're like, uh, but Poncho, and he's like, I can make it. I just like how he <laughs> yeah. says that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Dude, my whole was the last one to get killed. My yeah, whole his childhood. Have been liquefied. Yeah. My whole childhood was spent con- like thinking him and fucking uh, Shane Black were the same character. <laughs> like my whole childhood, I didn't realize there were two. No, I could guys. totally see that. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I mean, yeah. listen, they don't look alike, but right. it was just they were the only two skinny guys. So as a kid, I always thought they were the same person. Yeah, yeah. You might just make some one. It might person. have been like two years ago when I realized. <laughs> hold on, there's hold on, there's two of them. Oh, shit. Those are two different people. Larry's like, this is what's wrong with you people. And then they're like, what do you mean us people? And he's like, skinny guys. Skinny guys. Yeah. You all look the same. All you skinny guys look the same. Who else we got there, Lloyd? We got Jesse Ventura as Blaine Cooper, the heavy gunner. You know, he's got this really cool M134 minigun. He calls old painless. Uh, yeah. By the way, same gun used by Arnold in T2. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's like... A turret from a fucking like a, a <laughs> that, helicopter. Yeah. That is not a personal gun. That is that is meant to be lo- locked onto a helicopter. Yeah, right. Listen, yeah. Jesse's a big dude, right? I don't know that he could fire that without just being blown sixty feet. Yeah, backwards. the recoil would yeah. knock him off his ass. I, I mean, <laughs> you rip I don't one of those guys off in uh, Gears of War and use that. It's pretty cool. You can't move listen. It looks great though, man. The movie. You yeah. Know. Look, look. If if someone were to say to you, "Hey, like name ten things that you remember most <laughs> about Predator." the the fucking minigun is going to be in there. Got to be. Like, yeah. it, it, the first time I saw Predator, and again, I didn't see it in the theaters, I saw it like a year later on video. The second, like, when they, you know, when uh, when Max says, you know, better get some painless, and they take the blanket off of it, yeah. you you know, you're, it's the first time as a kid you probably got hard. It's like before you even saw it. <laughs> it's like before you even discovered girls, you're like, oh, look at that. That's a that's a giant yeah. machine gun. Come on, Larry. Yeah. Come I'm, on. I'm, all right. All right. I'm going to disagree. <laughs> you tried. You tried. <laughs> I think it was I think it was Debbie Harry, but whatever. All right, all right. Debbie Harry or, or old painless, whatever. Or old painless. Yeah. I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a real life Navy SEAL. I think everyone in the world knows <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the Baja. Yeah, 87 dogs. A thousand uh, gallons of potable water. <laughs> a silo full of tortillas. My Navy SEAL. <laughs> All right, anyway. uh, all right, everybody, go go watch Will Sasso. Google Will Sasso, Jesse Ventura. All right, uh, then you have Sonny Landham as Billy Soul, the uh, tracker and scout, and somewhat of an outsider of the group. I love uh, Sonny Landham, and uh, uh, one of the factoids as I was reading about this movie is that 20th Century Fox would yeah. not hire him unless the ins- or the insurance company would not let him be in the movie unless 20th Century Fox hired a escort slash bodyguard to spend all their time with him because when they would go into town to eat or do whatever, or at the hotel, he was so well known for just wanting to fight people all the time yeah. and get into fights and cause problems that the insurance company was like, he can't be in this movie otherwise. Yeah. So they had I, to I, hire. Saw an, I saw an interview with the producer <clears throat> with silver and he's like the insurance company called up and said, if you guys are going to cast Sonny, then you need to hire him a bodyguard and silver's like uh, sonny seems like a big dude i don't think he needs a bodyguard like no 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 not for him but for the people around him <laughs> yeah to make sure that he just doesn't fucking snap and start a fight with one of your stars he's like oh okay didn't know it was gonna Damn. be that kind of party so <laughs> yeah apparently uh well that apparently makes sonny is a real dude because he went he went hand to hand with uh, the predator yeah kind yeah. of he yeah. screams. He screams like a bitch too when yeah. he fucking oh, yeah. when it doesn't work out. But he's, uh, got, a, but he's got a great laugh. Great laugh. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when yeah. he finally gets one of Shane Black's jokes, and then uh, and then the predator repeats. Predator that mimics. Yeah. Yeah. Sunny Sunny Landham also who passed away like two years ago, I think. Yeah. Maybe, maybe right right at the beginning of COVID. Not COVID so, related, but not COVID related, but yeah. um, it was about two years ago. That, that's how I think of time now, Larry. I'm like post COVID. Pre COVID. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, and, I'm, and I'm very leery of saying post COVID. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm not trying to jinx anything. I'm just yeah, like, I, I uh, get that. Yeah, whatever it is. So Ventura and uh, Schwarzenegger obviously became governors of California, California, and Minnesota. 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 Um, (laughs) But a a little known fact is that Sonny Landon uh, ran for governor. I think I could be wrong on the state of South Dakota, maybe, but he he didn't he didn't win. Makes sense. So two two governors and a gubernatorial candidate are on this fucking squad. Wow. (laughs) What have you done lately, Carl Weathers? Yeah, what Carl <laughs> Weathers up to? He can, even Herschel Walker's running for fucking something. Somebody, somebody's got to talk to Carl Weathers. Get him, get him running. Yeah, he's, he's working on board. Yeah. He's working though. He's yeah, Mandalorian. True. All right, who else we got, Master? We got Shane Black. Uh, we mentioned before as Rick Hawkins, radio operator. Yep. He was hired to rewrite into one. He was hired to be there if they needed to do rewrites on the on on set. Yeah, uh, I saw I saw an interview with him, and he said, I was hired. And he said, this is very typical. He said, this is how Hollywood works. He said, they get a script, they pay for a script, and then they hire like six, seven people to rewrite it. They go through everybody's rewrites, and they always settle back on the original script. <laughs> He's like, so they just waste a ton of money so having people it. rewrite. He's like, but since they bought him in to rewrite, they also promised him a role in the movie, which is how he got in the film. Right. Yeah, because he wrote, you know, he wrote the glorious uh, Monster Squad. Um, also wrote Lethal Weapon, Last Boy Scout. He's written a bunch of stuff. And he also, he, he kind of can't not mention that for a guy that starred in the original. And and I think people confuse that he wrote this one, even though he really didn't. But you know, you always think of Shane Black, Lethal Weapon. He did write that last one <laughs> and directed that last one. I uh, I saw that last one. Yeah, I. Uh, Which I was en- the last one? Was it four? It no. was just, it was called The Predator. It was, uh, oh, the pre- I thought you were talking about a lethal weapon. No, 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 The Predator. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. Um, my son liked it, but he was also like five. Yeah. So you didn't I, see lethal, wait, wait, you didn't see Lethal Weapon 4? I don't think so. What's really? It's four? been out for what like happens? 20 years. Uh, oh, God. I don't remember. Jet Lee. Like, like, it's, it's the Jet Lee one. Yeah. Yeah. Mel Gibson before, yes. you know, all the yeah. bad stuff yes. happened. And, yes. And I did kill some it. people. And I'm outrageous. a big Jet I'm a big Jet Lee fan. So yeah, I did. He like he breaks the gun like in Jet Li's hand, or Jet Li breaks, Jet Li his breaks gun. the gun in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jet Li takes it apart in his yeah. hand. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I only I saw it one time. That. Jesus, same here. I'm pretty sure I only saw it once. I, I think yeah. actually, am, am I right in saying that yesterday or the day before, Mel Gibson announced he's directing Lethal Weapon Five, and it's going to be him and Danny Glover? I'm like, I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> Danny, Wasn't Glover, Danny Glover getting too old for this shit 35 years ago. Yeah, but yeah. the crazy part uh, is, is that 35 years ago, Danny Glover was like. Like probably right. your and my age, Larry. He's even younger. Though he, yeah, he's younger. <laughs> it's crazy. It's he gonna have to 30s. be flashbacks or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He That's looks. Good. He looks kind of old. Well, he is kind of like, old. Hmm. Oh, yeah, he's old. He's not kind of old. Yeah, he was old. He was old in uh, when he popped up he in um, fifty that, in that movie, right? Then you have a fiftieth birthday in the Lethal Weapon. Yeah. In the second one, I think. Like, yeah. yeah. R.G. Armstrong as uh, Major General Homer Phillips. Kevin Peter Hall as the Predator slash helicopter pilot. Big guy. I guess they originally wanted Jean-Claude Van Damme. Well, they had him. But, they had uh, him. Yeah. He, he yeah, shot some scenes. A whiny bitch. He didn't like it. And he's too small. You can't be five foot like nine. Five, and, yeah. Yeah. yeah he's not that tall at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, then, yeah. He didn't, he didn't work out. I guess there's actually some footage. Oh yeah. If yeah. you have the, if you have the, <laughs> like the, whatever the newest DV or Blu-ray is, is there's a great documentary on there that I didn't watch this time, but I watched before. And actually there was footage shot of the original predator costume. The original predator predator costume was very bug like. So yeah. I saw it. It was, it was not. See, that was the thing is, is every, everybody thinks it was red and that's why it was so terrible. There was no, one that was like a, uh, yeah. yeah, there was a bug one. Interesting looking. But then, like, all the scenes that Van Damme shot were in a completely red, almost velvety-looking costume because yeah. red was the color that shot against green the best, and they were going to use that for the scenes where they had to take him out for the for the camo scenes. So he shoots all this stuff in it. When he went to meet Joel Silver, Joel Silver met him, and he has him doing all the fucking Van Damme spin kicks and everything, and they're like, this guy's perfect. They get him in the suit, and the suit is so tall that his head is in the neck. <clears throat> There's no way he's doing any moves like this. So within like four or five days, he complained so much that they just said they fired him. They took him yeah. out. The original costume. They took him out back. 
They took him up back. <laughs> the original costume was designed by a, a studio called Boss Studio. Um, they did Ghostbusters, some special effects on Ghostbusters, uh, True Lies 2010, Fright Night, the 1985 version. And they decided that this is untenable, this costume, it doesn't work. They stopped production after a few days, contacted Stan Winston, who had just done Terminator, and they said, we need a new costume. So he gets put in charge. He makes it for a much taller guy. They hire Kevin uh, Kevin uh, Peter yeah. Hall. They redesign it with the weaponry and everything mm-hmm. like that. And uh, Kevin, I'm sorry, Stan Winston saw in Joel Silver's office a painting of a Rastafarian warrior, and he liked the look of the dreadlocks. So he gave it dreadlocks, and on the flight, they were taking a flight together to Universal for two different reasons. He was friends with James Cameron. He sat next to James Cameron. James Cameron told him, I've always wanted to see a creature with mandibles. Mm -hmm. So they put the mandibles in there. So Jim, James Cameron has a little bit to do with it, uh, the art of a Rastafarian warrior. But if you ever get to watch that documentary, we lucked out because obviously the Predator is iconic. The original Predator probably would not have been. And if you've ever seen the 2010 Predators movie with Adrian Brody and all uh, mm. Danny Trejo, yeah. the actual original Predator, there's a scene where they fight some other creatures. They use that costume in that scene. Oh, cool. Oh, That's really? cool, though. That's yeah. Neat. Yeah. yeah, I watched some of that making of last night. I have that uh, <clears throat> that Blu-ray, and it was pretty interesting. So definitely some interesting stories. That's where I, I got the Shane Black story and um, mm. whatchamacallit, uh, <clears throat> Schwarzenegger's prank on uh, on Jesse Ventura. Um, did you hear about that? When they were – so let's we'll, we'll tell it real quick before we talk about the movie. When they were measuring everybody's uh, arms and legs and stuff <laughs> for costume, they measure Ventura, and the wardrobe guy goes, oh, man, you're – biceps are an inch bigger than schwarzenegger's yeah he's like goddamn right they are bigger than <laughs> mr olympia blah 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 it's like so the next day we go to the gym and uh ventura is like hey I'll, I'll bet you i'll make you a bet a bottle of champagne my arms are bigger than yours and schwarzenegger's were like three inches bigger and schwarzenegger's like i'm the one who told the guy to tell you that that's a good what joke a, what a dickhead he's yeah. always fucking <laughs> that's funny he's Did, always fucking with people i remember when he was in public iron when he's talking about ferrigno he's like he comes to me for advices and i teach him how to lose he's so <laughs> Dude, he's so mean to Ferrigno oh, like, yeah, in yeah. Pumping Iron. He's so mean. Like, what is it? The milk is for babies, milk beer is babies. for men. <laughs> <laughs> so mean to Lou Ferrigno. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Poor right. Lou. Hey, I got one more. Optimus Prime and Eeyore himself provides the voice of uh, the Predator, uh, Peter Cullen. Peter oh. Cullen, yeah. Yep. He, he, uh, he apparently did 11 weeks on King Kong 1976 making like guttural noises. Of, you know, he was King Kong's voice, and his his larynx started to bleed. So he didn't want to do this job. Yeah, he didn't want to do this job originally. But then they just said, you don't have to really say anything. Just you know, figure out some noises to make. So he actually came up with the clicking sound. The nice. clicking sound was his invention, and and obviously oh. it works. Uh, and you know, it's fucking Optimus Prime, right? Yeah. <laughs> Roll out. All right. So <laughs> now that we're into the movie, Sean, uh, can you kind of walk us into? the initial beginning of this movie, why this team is showing up here and, uh, and what's going on initially. Like, 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 cause we always, you always think of predator. You think, well, it's predator versus these guys. There's a whole nother plot for the first 25 minutes of this movie. Yeah. There aren't they basically, they're going in to find another team that had crash landed behind, um, like hostile, like in hostile territory. Correct. Yes. And, and they're, they're, they're dropped in for that. You, you see them, they find that helicopter, in the very very beginning, but then shit pretty much starts to go haywire. Once, uh, once, once was it? Uh, Billy finds the the three corpses. The you know, corpses. <laughs> they're cur- the curing up in the trees. Um, yeah, salted gruesome. and kiss halted and curing. But yeah, yeah, the the original story is that they're sent in to try to. I, I don't know the the what was it? Uh, what kind they're of team was it? Supposed to rescue. They were supposed to pull a rescue off. Yeah, but those three people are well, at least three people. The, the people yeah, it was like there, a foreign cabinet minister and his aides or something like that yeah yeah there was an original action pl- plot to the story before you know everybody started getting skinned alive yeah well, I, don't know if I mean i, I think they're dead happens. before they get skinned but i mean maybe if, if they're skinned alive that's that's even worse obviously yeah yeah certainly in my book that would certainly be worse like if i'm going to be skinned i'd, I'd prefer to be dead 
before. It, <laughs> Same. I, yeah, I don't think it'll yeah. get any argument from any of yeah. us. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. I'm Sean, not calling you, are, you out on that, Sean. You are yeah. right about that, <laughs> my yeah. friend. If yeah, I if ever right. if I ever have the displeasure of being skinned, good lord, please let me not be alive for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so so I rewatched this the other day. Um, this is like I said, I own it. I this is the first time I've ever opened it. I don't know how how long I've owned it. I don't know when the last time I watched the beginning of this movie was, because this is just one of those, it's on TV all the time and where it is, is where I watch it. From. Mm-hmm. I, just, right. I just leave it on every fucking, I'm like, up, oh, brother's on Bing. I don't need to touch fucking channel anymore. So I haven't seen the very, I fucking didn't remember that the dude gets like an Uber to earth. Like, like the, right. very yeah, first the very, scene. the very, very, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm like watching, I'm like, Uber pod. what's happening here? I'm like, <laughs> Oh, he's flying his spaceship. I didn't really. And then hold on. No, he's getting dropped off of a spaceship. Like this was like a ride. Like, yeah, somebody gave, like, he's like, where should I go hunting this weekend? Oh, why don't you go to earth? And somebody <laughs> gave him a fucking ride there. I was his like, parents oh. are like, I'll pick you up in a week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't even think about that. Could have been his parents, right? Get us some human right. hides. He could be a kid and then that could be his parents. And yeah, it's very, very strange. I wish Pre- there's more. Is there more predator backstory? In, yes. Like, the, the comic okay. books, right? Comic so books, yeah, I'd imagine. That, that's the problem with, with and problem? Not, not that there's a problem with Predator, but Predator is one of these things where the movie doesn't really explain anything, right? Like, no, nothing. You, like, you, you don't know anything other than he's an alien. That's it. Right. Right. And I mean, you don't need you, to. You, well, right, I want to, I want to, Lloyd. You, like, you, you, I want to know that his parents are like the I alien parents from I, Explorers. I like, like that movie, one. like the movie Explorers with, uh, with young Ethan Hawke, remember when they go up and like the fucking aliens are all zany? Yeah. Like, I want those to be his parents. Like, <laughs> like I want some kind of like zany backstory. They're back. completely benign, but he's just kind of like the like I'm yeah, gonna go down to the planet and yeah. get us some dinner. He's a teenager. He's like so a you, rebellious you, uh, teenager. You like knowing what makes the Joker tick too. Then I guess sure. Yeah. All right, I get it. I, I'm fine with not knowing as as well yeah. as, as as what Lloyd's saying. But yes, if once this movie came out, and then I think in like around 1989 or so, uh, the Dark Horse comics um, had the licensing to this. And much like Aliens uh, and Alien, there there's a ton of stories where you start to learn, and they and they touch on it in uh, Predator Two when Danny Glover at the end gets into that room and you find the different skulls and the one predator hands him that old like pirate um, flintlock gun where you start to realize that they have been doing this through the course of history. So yeah, you learn more definitely in the, I guess, extended universe type stuff, but I'm fi- I'm fine with just knowing you. <laughs> and you also learn in this movie, essentially through the, through the soldiers, what's happening. You know, he's hunting us. Uh, we're, if you don't touch a weapon, he's not going to, not going to fuck with you. You know, he's looking to, to basically, you know, take on people of equal value. Um, yep. So, yep. all right. So, yeah, we have that whole thing going on here where there's, you know, this this team is missing. And then they talk about how another team went in after them. And it's it's starting to get a little convoluted as to what's really going on. But in the end, you kind of got to say to yourself, it doesn't matter. It sets us up for a pretty good action scene at the gorilla camp uh, where we get one of the two of my favorite Schwarzenegger lines ever uh, the knife into the guy uh, stick around. And then <laughs> when he blows the door open and uh, knock, knock, uh, yeah. you know, both, other mo- uh, both completely ad libbed by the way. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. By that, listen, <clears throat> by that time, Schwarzenegger had already done commando. He had yeah. fucking carte blanche. He had a pocket full of them. Yeah. He had carte blanche. So like after that, you go, go fucking go for it. Was this pre running man? Cause he had a ton in running man. Too. Same year. Same year. That makes sense. Same year. Sense. Running man was uh, like November. This is before June. So Sub zero now plane zero. <laughs> 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 let, let, let me sure let me go around let me go around and ask you guys since we're talking about him uh sean i'll start with you for you is it like for me this is prime schwarzenegger this is the movie i go back to when i'm thinking prime schwarzenegger what would you say yours is mm. oh wow um hmm. i got mine i'm on the spot with this one for me i'd i i'm a little i was eight when this movie came out or maybe even I was still seven. So I hadn't, I, you know, obviously hadn't seen predator at that time. My first real initial immersion into Schwarzenegger, I'd have to say was T2. I always go back to that. Like, it's just, and it, it's so iconic and it, it sounds almost, 
um, stereotypical to say that, but it's just you, every, when I, my first initial, like, wow, holy shit, this guy, like he's crazy. And he's got that weird accent that I, I don't understand. Like that's where I come from at that point in time. But I would say either this or, or commando for me would have to probably be the, the, the best of like the, the one-liners, the cockiness. Because in T2, he's a robot. In these movies, he's a human being. But he's like, a, you know, haha, I'm strong and I will fuck you up. You know, like, that's just, you know, that I think those two movies for him are like really what, what set the standard, to me, set the standard. All right, Manster, what do you got? Uh, well, I, I'm just going to have to go back to the original Terminator. That's, to me, that's that's prime Schwarzenegger. That That's in my era. Yeah, fantastic movie. And yeah, yeah, it, it, it certainly... Talk. It certainly set him up to uh, to do all this other stuff. All right, Larry, you said you had yours. What's yours? You can't say raw deal. Yeah, it's Terminator. All right. No, it's a Terminator. I saw it in the theater. I think I was probably like 10, 10 years old. Yeah, it's not the funniest, even close to his funniest. I mean, for me, like, I'll pick two because just as a straight action hero, the Terminator is what introduced me to Schwarzenegger um, and will always be like my first introduction. But I love The Running Man. Mm-hmm. Oh God. I mean, one line, I mean, commando's got great one liners too, but I just love the running man all around. I just think it's a hysterical movie. Plus you got odd job. You got Jesse Ventura, just a great, <laughs> great fucking, you got what's Dynamo. his name? Richard. Dawson. Yeah. The, uh, the big, you got Richard Dawson. Then you got the yeah. big dude from, uh, from the wanderers, uh, who was yeah. also in stir crazy, Dynamo. uh, Erlen something. I can't remember what the fucking yeah. real name was. It's running man and it's Terminator. Yeah, I go Predator. It's the one I always go mm-hmm. back to. But yeah, I mean, he really, like, if I could come close to saying I had an on screen hero in those days, it was Schwarzenegger. He was the one that, like, if his movie came out, I was going to go see it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. You yeah. know, no, sure. so you're not, I was, I was more of a, I was a Rambo guy. Really? <laughs> see, to me, I, yeah. I always liked uh, St- Stallone, but like, yeah. Like to me, like Rambo First Blood Part Two is maybe one of the most overhyped movies of the eighties. Like it, that's it just probably the stupidest thing anybody's said <laughs> in like in America today. That no. is probably one of the stupidest things anybody's ever said. It, it's we it's even just, podcasted on that. Yeah, no, we podcasted on one. Oh, on we first did the first blood. one. Yeah, oh, I thought we did. Right. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. I don't know. I just I I, I I was never that that big into the Rambo stuff. I do enjoy. The uh the fourth one where he kills everybody with that fifty cal on the back of the jeep. Dude, um, but- <laughs> dude, I remember when that came out, and I watched it. I was like, dude, this may be the goriest movie of all time. Like, yeah, people are f- literally fucking exploding. Like this is fucking bananas. Yeah, but then he made that last awful home alone was, with john rambo yeah where he was all chatty and just yeah. like hey how you doing i'm like this that's joey from friends this isn't john rambo like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I like it, he should have just left it with the thailand one where everybody was exploding that would have been that would have been perfect i mean rambo 3 was a god-awful mess there's just well except for the scene. one where he was done the, the boat guide well that was that the was, that was the cow. one we're talking about that was yeah. thailand that was good yeah. That was good. Part three was in Afghanistan, and it was just uh That's the one where he he gets shot through through the body, and he puts the gunpowder in, and then sets himself on fire. <laughs> I, I find you see the fire shooting out of his ribs. Yeah, I love that fucking stupid That's piece it. of shit. I was like that. I was like that doesn't look safe at all. Not at all. I've, ne- I've never seen anybody in the hospital get that treatment <laughs> done. <laughs> so, oh my look, god, he's been shot! Quick, light him on fire. Quick. <laughs> uh, so mr mr dwyer what the doctor is going to do is he's going to fill your body with gunpowder and then introduce a live flame to it now you're going to you're gonna you're gonna feel heats up to 900 degrees uh searing through your abdomen you are, are totally allowed to let out a rambo like scream and uh and then in the next four or five days we'll see if infection kills you <laughs> yeah. you may feel a little woozy at first yeah slightly woozy from your rambo fucking cauterization <laughs> yeah. but i was uh i i know there was two there was two camps schwarzenegger and stallone and i was a uh, I was a stallone i love schwarzenegger but my guy was sylvester stallone was my guy over the top baby fuck you that's what oh that's Christ all time. almighty don't Christ even almighty. Say, don't say anything negative cobra. about over the top cobra when i turn the head backwards move. it's like Turn it's like switch. a switch. Yeah. It's like a switch. Yeah. <laughs> fucking dude. Oh, Cobra. Are you fucking kidding me? 
Well, I, f- I feel like I feel like now that me and Larry have both said opposite ends here, I got to ask you guys, Lloyd uh, Stallone or Schwarzenegger? And uh, let's let's kind of leave it at eighties, like right? Let's yeah, not. No, like... I was I was uh, Schwarzenegger. All right, Sean uh, Schwarzenegger. Definitely. Okay. All right. So Larry, you're you've been voted off the island. As no, you would well, say. I mean, you guys are all He's wrong. On That's island. fine. That's fine. <laughs> We're on the mainland. <clears throat> all right. Let's get back into the movie. So yeah. they go to this gorilla uh, compound. And they essentially find that everybody's been killed. Pull well, the shit out of that. Calvin they destroy the fuck oh out of it. God. Yeah. They destroy the fuck out of it. There's one scene where they have to have the scene where Schwarzenegger shows his incredible strength. So he mm. lifts he lifts a truck that they're using. I don't know, make, make water <laughs> yeah, out of or something. Doing? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what they up. were doing. They, was, they like, had a truck Rolls hooked it. up with like a belt running to, I don't know, it was, was it drying the laundry? Yeah. I don't know yeah. what that belt Aren't there was people doing? inside? That's how the gorillas. That's how the gorillas do their laundry with yeah. a fucking with a 1957 truck yeah, with, with, with like a belt on its axles. Yeah. Truck. It's like the <laughs> Flintstones. Like, what are There's they doing out there? <laughs> are, they, are they making tortillas? Is that what they're doing? I have no idea. What's the first encounter with the predator? It's uh, it's it's Hawkins, right? How does he? What happens there? I don't remember. I'm trying to remember how does does he see something or I think Billy see, thinks he sees something. Billy's first because Billy's like staring up and he gets I can't remember if it was Dutch or uh or Duke and it's like what are you looking at? He's like There's something in the trees and then he's like I don't see nothing. He's like I must be wrong. Like so I think yeah, that he's was standing like, there like a statue kind of yeah, like he's, he's so staring focused up on it because Billy's like their tracker right <laughs> because. You know, it's 1987. He's Native American, and that's how you think of Native Americans in 1987. He's the tracker, obviously, yeah. because he's Native American. You know, they might as well have just had him sitting in a fucking teepee and fucking buying stuff with wampum. Well, look, <laughs> well, look, look, look. Let's not let's not just blame Predator because in GI Joe, the tracker character was a Native American named Spirit who had an eagle. So yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. That makes perfect hey, what, sense. What? Where, where country is this in? I, I that's I don't Mexico. know. They're in Mexico. They're in Guatemala. Yeah. It's yeah. filmed in Mexico, but I think at some okay. point they say Central America, so it All might right. be like oh, Guatemala oh, or yeah, something. Guatemala. But it was yeah. filmed in Mexico. That's what filmed I mean. in Mexico. It was, yeah. it was filmed in the Baja. <laughs> <laughs> now, is the first time you see the predator after um, they don't see him Blaine? at that time? At the time I just right, mentioned, they, don't, they see don't see him. You don't see him. But when Blaine gets the bolt. And then he, he like drops or whatever. You see sort of like a shifting. I think that's the first time you actually it's either, see either it's either that or the girl sees him first. Sees like the camouflage mirror, the mirror camouflage. It's one of those. Maybe, yeah. But I, all I know is the first time you see it, you're just your mind is blown away as what you're seeing. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's nothing ever been like that before. Right. Yeah, it essentially uses a light bending technique to make itself visible, but yeah. the effect on screen, and I love how I'm explaining this to viewers, because if you haven't seen Predator, just fucking, you should have seen yeah, it by now. I'm pretty but sure you have. <laughs> it's essentially like a bendy, uh, like like the forest is bendy, or whatever it's standing against is bendy. It's it's very cool. Yeah, um, it is, it's, so, a cool, it's a cool effect, especially for 1987. So Hawkins is the first one to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's totally, yeah, totally. Hawkins is the first one to go. Uh, they find him hanging up in a tree skin. So this is where they know they're in trouble. Now, initially, they think that it is uh, more of these gorillas or whoever, you know, uh, yeah. killed Jim Hoppa and his men. Um, and then, as as you guys said, they start to notice things more and more. Uh, so the next person that gets it is uh, Blaine, yep. uh, the Jesse Ventura character. This is a great scene. Sean, can you explain exactly what happens to this guy? Because this scene is always just so fucking, it's gnarly. He, it's just he he's kind of just standing there and doesn't realize that he's like in the crosshairs and just gets just aced basically from was it up in the trees everybody yeah. he's always yeah. up in the trees but yeah he gets does he get shot from behind and it just it kind of goes right through him right i think, I think he, he, shot he takes a shot first like it, to the shoulder it looks like it's like to the neck him around I think. Yeah. And it like spins him around. Yeah. And and then he takes one like directly to the back, which just blows his whole chest like wide open. His heart flies yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Like just <laughs> like all you see is like just a little bit of rib cage left. Yeah. <laughs> like it's insane. Like and just like, like he got... said, he didn't have time to bleed. No, he didn't. Yeah. No. He instantly right. cauterized. Yeah. I guess no. he ceased being the body at that point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's not Jesse the corpse of Ventura. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jesse lack of body Ventura. Now, Manster, oh. who does Blaine's death affect probably the heaviest of the whole crew? 
Well, Blaine's buddy was Mac. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So Mac picks up Blaine's uh, helicopter turret gun. And <laughs> literally, him and the entire team fire every they, shell in South they America. fucking mow down the, the jungle like yes. no one's business. Every piece of fucking artillery in South America is fired into <laughs> that jungle. And that's what gets me because you don't see any of them carrying any ammo cans or anything like that. Like after this, like, what are they supposed to do? Like every said, like they blew their entire load on that, that one scene. It's yes. like, no, no one's, I, no one's carrying around any other. That's why that's probably why Arnold had to make improvise all those weapons at right. the end. But they did listen. Thankfully through all of that, they shot him once in the knee. They got him in the leg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily he had his Johnson and Johnson alien uh, leg shot kit. First, base, first yeah. aid kit. Yeah. First aid kit to, to help him take the bullet out and yeah. clamp That's himself another down. Another cool scene too, when his leg is on over the log there and it sort of just appears. There's, oh yeah. 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 Well, and how would you describe like I, every time I ever watch predator, that's one of the things I love about predator is that they never really give you enough of the creature until the end. Yes. It, would you, would you describe his body as like, turtly or reptilian you know what i mean like reptilian definitely reptilian totally yeah. reptilian like weird like brownish green skin looks like it's probably clammy as shit yeah and, clammy. yeah yeah all right so yeah and he's very, got that cool face shield you know with that uh, very unique not not kind of buggy shape but yeah he's got the mask on he's got the yeah. shoulder cannon which we you know we learn is one of his weapons he's yeah. got the badass uh the two-pronged um claw yeah, mm -hmm. that comes out. And we also learned that through the course of the movie, uh, we, we didn't mention it before, that he has been following them and he sees mostly, it appears to be through his mask in thermal vision. Yes. Um, and he's also kind of recording everything that they're saying and kind of like mimicking some of it back. One of the things he uses to multiple, to good effect multiple times is Billy's laugh. Um, mm -hmm. The Hawkins character tells Billy two pussy jokes in the movie. <laughs> uh, the first time is on the helicopter on the way in, which, by the way, the helicopter ride is awesome. Yeah, they're, good ride. They're, yeah. they're listening to Long Tall Sally, yeah. uh, all kinds of macho shit going on. Oh, and yeah. uh, and Hawkins says, uh, I, I went over to my girlfriend the other day, and I said, yeesh, I'd like a little pussy. And, uh, and she said <laughs> yeah. to me, so would I. Uh, mine's as big as a house. And uh, and Billy doesn't get it. He, he, he just doesn't gets, get it at all. He stares him stares down. at him. Yeah. Stares yeah. at him. So then uh, after the gorilla scene, he, he Hawkins tells him the second joke, which is where the predator gets the laugh from, which is this great bellowing laugh. And it's um, what is it again? Who knows the joke? It's the echo joke, right? Yeah, said, I'm uh, going down on my girlfriend, and yeah. uh, I can't. Remember. He said something, but then repeats. I don't remember. He said hello. He said. Yeah, something. Hello. Tastes great. Tastes great. Why'd you, and, why'd you why'd say it twice? twice? I didn't. <laughs> It was the echo. Get it? <laughs> yeah, that fucking laugh. Yeah, the yeah, laugh. So it, the uh, the predator is also a, a master mimicker, mimic hunter. Yep. Probably probably paints well. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, guy, this guy's got a lot going on. Excellent sketch artist. <laughs> yeah. So they they fire every uh, bit of base. Every bullet, he plays a mean base. Every mean bullet, every mean bullet, every bullet in South America into the, into the jungle. I always wondered in that scene too: is that a scene of? Is it written stupidly, or is it supposed to? Is it supposed to show that these guys trust each other so much that if if Mac is doing that, they they all know something's going on, right? It's, you, it's 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 a combo of that, and it's that they trust Mac, and a, just like solidarity with Mac. Yeah. Like, even if they don't believe there's anything there, they're going to just take Max back and do follow Max fucking lead. And that's it. So we get to start. We start to learn now that the the woman that's with them, they picked up a woman at the gorilla camp. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she claims to speak no English. She speaks English. Mm -hmm. And she tells of a, a myth or a story of how um, in the hottest years, uh, this seems to happen over and over again. Something is hunting the men, the men folk, and they go out and they don't come back and everything. So that's tying into the into the myth that this thing has been coming back over and over again. Yeah. Uh, we get a incredible, uh, incredibly macho um, fucking montage scene where they decide that they're going to set up a net, and you know they're all the shirts are all off, and they're pulling fucking counterweights up and doing that whole thing. They try to catch the predator, Sean. What do they catch instead? I thought it was I thought that they they did catch the predator in the, the net. No, I, I take that back. I, uh, minus that whole thing. Oh, uh, you're talking about when the uh, pig, the pig. Asleep. 
They were asleep. Yeah. I'm sorry. They'd so set, well, they'd set they'd set all the fucking booby traps. That's what I said. Booty traps. <laughs> they set all the booty traps uh, and go to sleep. And one of the traps goes off and everybody wakes up and fucking Mac is just fucking, he's like, I got you, motherfucker. I got you. <laughs> and he's fucking, you see him fucking stabbing away at what he thinks is obviously what's been chasing him. And it turns out to be this giant fucking boar and everybody gives him a little shit for it. But yes, yeah, not too eaten. much. He kills the boar. Uh, and at some point too, we didn't mention. That was a mention, big fucking uh, boar. That was a big. It was. Boar. It was a giant fucking boar. At one yeah. point, we I, we I forgot to mention the predator also steals uh, Blaine's body during uh, that. I think it was yeah, it during yeah. that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah during that when, scene. When that scene yeah, during they're the like, chaos. hold on, where the fuck is where the fuck is Blaine's body? And it's uh, it's gone. The predator's playing fucking. Oh, I forgot know, about that. Yeah, fatal, playing is that the one where he rips the spine out of it, ripping the fucking skull and spine out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was intense. Yeah. So we go back to what I was saying a minute ago. They do the montage scene. They yep. do catch the predator in the net. Right. Um, but the predator uses its long. uh its shoulder cannon to blast its way out. It's invisible. It lands on the ground. And during all the chaos, one of the traps they set up for the predator was a giant log on a rope that was going to swing down and, and meant to kill it and hit it. It swings down and <laughs> fucking a it gets poncho oh, like gosh. I, I don't know how, uh, Sean, how did this guy survive this? I would have been dead. I, I, been. It, well, when they have to drag him out, I don't even know how he was running. And I was actually watching that part when they're, when, when Arnold's trying to get him out of there, he's got him by the belt, like dragging him along, like holding him so that he can't even run. But I, I mean, shit, if I got hit by a log, I mean, that thing's got to weigh like easily like four or 500 pounds. Like, like I said earlier, I mean, his insides are liquefied. I, it's, you know, yeah, cut the, I cut the loss at that, at that point. point. Like, yeah, like I just be like, yeah, just put a bullet in me. Don't don't just save yourselves. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Yeah, <laughs> and th- and this is where the action of, of shifts. It's perfect segue, Sean. Is they have to get to the chopper. They decide that uh, uh, Dutch and Pancho and the girl are going to go try to rendezvous with the chopper. Right. And uh, and Dylan and Mac. Now Mac is going to is wants to fucking get this thing. And Dylan, this is a redemption arc. We haven't talked about it a whole lot, but he essentially put these guys in this situation. He's a bureaucrat. He was supposed to be Dutch's friend. He was a in his squadron at one point. They make a yeah. make a point of saying it, but he kind he kind of fucked them over. He just um, used them. Yeah. Well as Schwarzenegger says, you know, you drop the six of us into a meat grinder. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so so Dylan and Mac decide they're going to, you know, go and, and take care of the predator and let these guys get away. Well, and Dylan doesn't really decide because Mac couldn't kind of goes batshit at that point and just takes off into the woods. And yeah, Dylan's does. like Dylan's like, fuck, I have to go babysit this guy now. That's the way yeah. I look at it. Like so Ma- when Mac just kind of like runs off, he's going batshit crazy. And and Dylan's like, All right, you guys go where you have to go. I- I'll I- I have to handle this. I have to take care of that. He was kind of, he was kind of at Mac's discretion at that point in time. Yeah, but yeah, I, Mac kind of loses his shit at that point, and I thought that was funny. That's why I, when when he takes off, I laugh at that every single time I've seen that movie. He he runs off and looks like motherfucker. I'm gonna kill you, and just that's it. I love Mac. He was my, one of my favorites in that movie. Yes, he he's great. And and one of the coolest parts of this movie, it um, completely. Well, you know, you, you, being a being a viewer of this movie, you know that it's got to come down to Schwarzenegger and the Predator. That's the way it's going to happen, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so you know they're going to get rid of everybody else. And I'm sorry, Billy is also with them. I forgot to mention he's still alive. Yeah. Um, For a but, little bit. But Mac and Dylan, right? Like, if you're watching this for the first time, you might think, "Oh, these guys are going to, you know, do some damage. This is going to this scene's going to last twenty, maybe fifteen minutes with these two looking for it. They're fucking dead within like fucking six or Five seven minutes. minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, Mac, uh, Mac is crawling under a, uh, a log tr- trying to slowly work his way over to it. Uh, and he, he gets, he sees the, the, um, the right reticles on his arm and then boom, his head gets blown off. Uh, Dylan Lloyd, you want to describe Dylan's death scene? Cause this is what I think this is one of the best ones in the movie. So does he, does he scream first or during? He, he screams, well, he screams after his arm gets cut off. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's standing up there. He's just looking around and I don't know about you guys, but I am not expecting him to die at all. I'm not expecting Carl Weathers to go yet. And uh, his arm just gets blown the fuck off. And, but it, when it lands, the whole arm is twitching up and down. The, the finger is still pulling the trigger over and over. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. And, uh, you know, Dylan's just screaming at the top of his lungs. It's a beautiful scene. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite bits of that whole scene is the cloaked predator running at him. Yeah, like, and he's he just standing there. Yeah, he finally he sees, sees it, it for the first time. Yeah, he right. Pull, he pulls the other gun off of his shoulder with his one hand left, and just as he gets it there, you see the fucking the blades come out, 
and he just gets eviscerated. Right, so right in the chest. Those two guys are done. So now we're on the other side. Two things happen in this scene that are two of my favorite scenes in this entire movie. So Billy Poncho, uh, the girl, and and Dutch are are running to get to the chopper. Billy decides to stop because he knows, like you know, you're assuming it's this whole Native. He American knows they're thing. not going to fucking make. He it. knows they're not going to make it. He's but yeah, fucking... you're right. It's also a you know, I'll protect the white man. It, it, well, if no, it feels more like 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 to me, it feels more like you know, I have to make my stand. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, Larry, I what, think that's it. The great eagles told me to protect the white man. <laughs> yeah, so he's got to slice his chest. He slices yeah. his chest, and then uh, you know, the next thing we hear is just him screaming because he gets murdered too. But the next part is where I get two of my favorite shots in this movie. What? Well, one's a shot, and one is a, a piece of dialogue which everybody loves. They're running away, and. Uh, Poncho just gets fucking his head blown off. The uh, the predator is in a tree and just blasts Poncho, which makes you wonder, like, the predator's rules. Like, he wasn't armed and he's hurt. <laughs> so I guess all's fair in war, but uh, he blows Poncho away. And the girl goes for the gun. Schwarzenegger, this is one of my favorite scenes. Schwarzenegger, in one swift movement, basically says, don't pick that up. Mm -hmm. he, kicks it, he kicks it out of her hand. And then he does this, like, spin and just fucking fires into the tree. It's one of the coolest looking fucking scenes. I just love that scene. Completely misses. Um, the, the predator blasts him in the chest, or I think the shoulder is where he gets it. Yeah, him. he gets hit. Yeah. He gets hit. He goes down. And then, of course, we get the one of the greatest lines of dialogue of all time, Larry, which is. I don't know. What, what, which line is that? Come on, man. Let's which... get to the chopper. Oh, oh at that I'm get sorry. The chopper. I thought we were already there. I thought they already did that. Go! Run! run get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Oh, sorry. Wrong. Get wrong. your ass to Mars. <laughs> she <laughs> takes off. Get the people the air cohesion. It's not a tumor. <laughs> I'm not sure which. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, only in a rerun. I don't remember which uh, line it is. She takes off. She starts heading for the chopper, and now it's essentially just him and her, uh, or just him alone with the predator. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he's running away, he has the complete misfortune of falling off what looks like the the world's scariest waterfall ever. Yeah, well, that really see, that shot, slide. that shot, like where he goes over. Yeah. I don't know just from watching that how he hit the water because there was easily a hundred feet of land <laughs> yeah. under him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, that slide propelled him quite a ways outwards. He, he must have hit like a wind gust. He's like a yeah. fucking <laughs> he's like a flying squirrel or something. Uh he lands in the water. He's one of those uh, new parachuting spiders. Yeah, he's like the are, Batman. They're on their way to fucking Dude, Connecticut. Don't, don't bring that up, man. I saw the video on that. Now I'm all fucking perturbed. You uh, see over, these things? Yes. Oh my. They say that they're they say they're, they're docile, huge. but they're huge. <clears throat> Have you guys heard of this? The spiders that are coming from from down south. Uh, they mm -hmm. they they came from uh, I think Asia. Yeah, I heard about it. it. Ended up in Georgia like ten years ago. They travel on like little um, little um, uh, silk parachutes, and now they're saying that they're going to be here in like June or July. Are they like as big as your palm. They're, yes, like, yeah, as yeah. big as your palm, and they just float in the air. They're not venomous and they're not aggressive. They're saying that they're like a super docile spider. But if I see spiders falling out of the fucking sky, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm honestly, kill somebody. if I'm I saw kill if I saw bags of M and M's falling out of the sky, I would probably be nervous about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so <laughs> I, you, you can't tell me. So yeah, th that's apparently happening. Just so you guys know, right? Um, so he lands in 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 this in this mucky, disgusting uh, riverbed. Uh, Sean, and kind of take over from here. What what happens as soon as he lands in? Well, for, first he he lands in the. I mean, he goes through a lot of like shit. First he falls, um, like what, like a hundred, hundred twenty feet into oh, that that water. Two hundred feet, easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and and it's like it's an it's an epic Olympic dive too because there's a flip. Yeah, and he he lands. He, he hits feet first, which is entirely lucky because that would kill most normal people. And then he's got to go over the waterfall. He goes over the other waterfall and manages to survive that, not being sucked down under the pressure with the water there. And but that's when he he realizes that that uh, the um, that the, the predator can see it, like the thermal, basically because he he gets that. That's when he starts coating himself <clears throat> with the mud, and he realizes like because the predator goes by him and kills like a chipmunk or a rabbit or whatever, but mm -hmm. does, it doesn't even see that he's there 
and um, he's kind of like doing that weird thing where he's like up in the, the yeah, branches. what a cool scene. He's, he's in he's the like he's just kind of standing there. All you see is our, like his eyes, and it's just and that was that was a pretty cool. That was that's the the kind of the turning point of like, oh, this is how we fool this guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's not his weakness. Yeah. If it's a weakness, I guess it's a weakness. It's a weakness. It, it works for a good chunk of the last 20. You know, that's another thing about this movie that I think people might forget is how long like this whole him and him scene. It, it's it's probably a good 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Right. Yeah. It's not it's yeah, not like it's, every, yeah. it's not like everybody else dies. There's a final fight and it's over yeah. because you, you have this scene and then you move right into where you have another montage. Basically. Right. Where he prepares. He's yeah. like, like Sean said, they wasted all of their fucking ammo. The one yeah. gun, the two guns that had had uh, bullets left in it, the one that uh, Schwarzenegger had, he obviously dropped after he got shot, and Billy had a fully a fully loaded rifle that he throws away. He, threw, he just threw <laughs> off a log. He throws off a log. Like he doesn't think anybody else. Like here, guys, take this in case. He's like, I'm gonna throw this off a log. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my my eagle spirit guy told me to ditch this thing. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Well, yeah, well, I'm just saying. I don't know. No, no, it's it's true. You boned oh. us, Billy. You really <laughs> fucked us over. Yeah. <laughs> You know, fuck the your, fuck your eagle spirit guy, Billy. Yeah. So, so that so then yeah. that's when he goes into that whole Kevin McAllister Home Alone, like, um, yeah. Like, especially later on, when he's like, "I'm over here, come kill me." It's like it's it kill reminds me, me now. It come reminds kill me, me now. Home, like, I'm over here, guys. Like the wet band. It's like <laughs> yeah. Joe Pesci's gonna show up and try to kill Arnold Schwarzenegger. I wish I do wish like he threw a paint can on a string. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking <laughs> that too. hit the hit the predator in the face, and then like he <laughs> the slips on down. some micro machines and steps on <laughs> yeah. Christmas ornaments. <laughs> what, what was what was the imagine cra- if you like rolled out like this I think that's drawn, the only thing could have crayon made drawn better. like fucking plans like Schwarzenegger <laughs> just rolls out these schematics drawn with crayons if if Schwarzenegger had somehow managed to use the video of uh the uh what was it angels with dirty faces yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah. Schwarzenegger keep the change you filthy animal he's heating up his mac and cheese before the fucking predator comes <laughs> <laughs> so basically we figured out this is home alone home alone the predator yeah. is basically home alone with an alien but it's yeah. three years before home alone so maybe maybe home, home alone, alone is, yeah, home kids, alone. is kids predator maybe yeah, it's child <laughs> predator child predator what was <laughs> what was the, yes child predators what was the, don't say that i want this episode to come I'm out just saying um, they are. <laughs> fucking whatever they're the, F, the fbi van is circling now in part two, they were going to fucking kill him. They're real creepy in part two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were bad. What was the horror movie? I saw it, I think, not this last Christmas, the Christmas prior oh. with, with my wife, where they proved like how bad that paint can to the head. It would kill the guy. Uh, better watch out. Did you ever see oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. movie. Yeah, it's a great, it's a really fun movie, yes. and and there's that whole scene where he's like, uh, "Do you think that would really not hurt someone?" And he kills the guy with the paint can on the on the uh, on the rope. The right. guy's head just crushes. Yeah, it like explodes. Yeah, because yeah. that's I mean, you know, home the stuff he does. The, I watched Home Alone a few Christmases ago. I hadn't seen it in a long time, probably since I was a kid. I was 15 when that came out, so I enjoyed it. But like, you know, I you know, 30 years later, I watched it, and I'm like, he he sets him on fire at one point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely from the fucking Roadrunner <laughs> Wiley Coyote school of uh, getting rid of, you know, because you watch those old road Roadrunners and they're, you know, he's oh, dropping brutal. fucking safes from three hundred feet, like that could be safe. Yeah, yeah, like it's he's definitely painting a school. painting a picture on the side of the mountain. The the two questions I think as an adult you have for Home Alone that you don't have as a child is number one, does anybody realize how horrible it would be for him with the stuff he did to these guys, yeah. and number two. What does his dad do for a living? Oh. Because they live in that house and he's yep. taking like extended family to Paris. Right. <laughs> like right. on his dime. Right. Uh so yeah. <laughs> and then he's doing it again in parking part two. He's taking the whole fucking family on a vacation. <laughs> like, what kind of money does this guy fucking make? Yeah. And then he, he barely tips the pizza guy. The fucking douchebag. I mean, yeah. Man, oh happened? man. Take it easy on the oh, Pepsi. Uh, what was the kid's name? Take uh, it easy Fuller? on the Pepsi. Fuller? <laughs> Fuller. Yeah. Fuller. He's, he's got the can up to his face and he's shaking. <laughs> yeah. Look what you did, you little <laughs> jerk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to Predator. Oh, um, man. So yeah, he sets everything up. He sets up a uh, this elaborate counterweight system with a rock that's going <laughs> to smash the predator's head, yeah. and everything's working swimmingly uh, while the mud is on. Um, he he starts to use like a uh, bow and arrow with uh, with with some explosives to try to like disorient the predator. Everything's working great until the predator 
just says fuck this and starts blasting his cannon everywhere. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And eventually he uh he 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 flushes Dutch out. Dutch runs, jumps on a branch to get away, and the branch breaks, and he lands in the fucking water, which, as we know, will wash everything off. It washes all the mud off, <laughs> and Dutch is exhausted at this point. He crawls out of the fucking out of the water, puts his head on a log, and great we get scene. the great scene where yeah. fucking where the predator fucking jams his head Wolverine in between the claws. fucking yeah. right right in between. Mm. And yeah, and so this, this is where we get yeah, yeah this is where this we get is, like, the this final is my fight. That's my favorite scene of the movie. This not the Wolverine claws part, but this next part where the predator is like, okay, now I see you. Now we're man to man, and I've marked you as an equal. I'm going to take off my weapons, yeah, and fight you straight up. Yep. Yeah. And like, like he's just like basically he's like smack like backhanding him until like dutch punches him and he realizes oh i can punch too and so he starts punching like he's trying to fight on dutch's terms like he's trying to learn how dutch fights to show him that he can beat him without weapons on his own terms great fucking scene and, and we get another gets- great line right which line uh, is that? Was that when the, the mask ugly- comes off yeah oh yeah oh, God. ugly <laughs> motherfucker yeah yeah. What were you going to say, Master? I was going to say when he does rip that mask off, right? And he's uh, his pose, you know, he, he does the crouch down and he puts his arms <laughs> out like, oh yeah. my God, it's going down. Yeah. Like, he, like that, that's a street fight pose there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, we're fighting for those Jordans right yeah, now. And Schwarzenegger, yeah, and Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger did not look psyched. He was just like, ah. Right. No, it's and then because yeah, Predator's like seven foot two. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then I, I was reading about this whole scene. Kevin Peter Hall couldn't see through the mask. So Schwarzenegger said mm-hmm. in an interview uh, I read with him that that whole final fight scene, like the pulled punches and everything, he was still smacking them around. Because yeah, Kevin right. Peter Hall can't tell what's happening. So, like, he's blinded, basically, wearing this stuff. He can see very little. He's going to hit him with a smack and try to stop it. And he might stop it with his hand, but his wrist is cracking him in the side of the head. Schwarzenegger said it was very difficult, that final fight scene. And he got beat up pretty well. They go at it pretty good. Uh, I do love the scene where, I don't does he hit him with a punch or with a, with a stick when he hits the Predator? And the Predator just, like, does that little spurt of blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes that noise. Yeah. <laughs> By the um, way, uh, 22 minutes. I got it on right now. It's 22 minutes, that final uh, Schwarzenegger versus Predator scene. Yeah, it's 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 almost funny to realize almost how short the middle portion is, right? So the beginning portion where you meet the characters and they go into the gorilla um, uh, base is like probably uh, 20, 22 minutes. Yeah. This is 20, 22 minutes. The middle part where I think everybody thinks about Predator, you know, this he's he's taking on all these taking out all these elite soldiers. That's probably 35 minutes. You know what I mean? It's not like the bulk it's not as much of the movie as you would think it is, I guess. Right. Uh, is the way is the way I would look at it. So yeah, they they're fighting uh Larry, what happens uh, uh during this fight? A lot. They fight each other. Well, I mean, what else? <laughs> I, I mean, well, I guess where where does it where does this go? Like, how, how does he end up incapacitating the predator? Well, oh, so yeah, so he brings him, he gets him back to his little booty traps, Ugh. um, and he tries to coax. He like he's like up against a like in a hole against a wall that he dug, and he's like, "Come on, come get me, come in here, I'm in here." Kill and me. Kill me now. Kill me now. What are you waiting for? Get to the chopper. Oh, oh. Get your ass to Mars. Oh. So the predator's about to fucking come under, but all of a sudden, like, he looks up and he sees a pointy stick, and he can tell that Schwarzenegger's trying to trick him. He built, like, a gate with sharpened sticks that he's going to fucking trap, like, catch onto him, like, if he tries to come. So predator's like, fuck this. He jumps out of the hole and starts walking around to him. And you're like, fuck, Schwarzenegger's done. Like, he figured him out. But, you know, Dutch is smart. Yeah. He set up a backup. And he's got some, somehow he managed to get some, like, thousand pound fucking <laughs> log slash rock deal yeah. strung up there. Log yeah. rock. And log rock. And he fucking <laughs> kicks the... Uh, three inch stick that he has holding the log in place yeah. <laughs> it's just a tiny little knot yeah it's a, like a three inch stick on a piece of twine that is holding <laughs> this five thousand pound rock up like 30 feet into the fucking air yeah kicks that and it comes crashing down on the predator and uh smashes him good schwarzenegger thinks he's still alive he grabs a big rock he's about to smash his head 
and he just sees that he's fucking gone. He's like spitting green blood all over himself. You know, just like you would see like somebody got shot, they're spitting blood all over himself. Same thing. This dude, yeah. he's done. He's a done. He's done deal. So Dutch drops the rock. He's like, fuck, I don't need to do anything else. Yeah. Drop because, the rock. Yeah, because yeah. Pred- Predator has a, a another trick up his sleeve yeah. after the whole "What the hell are you? You weak? Know, what the what the so- hell are you?" What the hell are you? What the <laughs> hell are you? And then all of a sudden he goes to his uh, Wonder Woman bracelet and starts fucking sliding around and pressing things. And then there's a bunch of, uh, I don't know. Tapping things with the lead press ons. It's like yeah, a bunch of hieroglyphics. Tiger games, like with the hand yeah. games from the 80s. Like, beep, boop. Exactly. <laughs> Which somehow Schwarzenegger takes that to mean that it's an explosive device. I don't know. <laughs> what I else would it be? I don't know. I would have just stood there and looked at it until I exploded. Yeah. I'm like, what is that fucking? Can I try that? Like, like, is that is Dr. That? Mario? <laughs> but then I think, you know, what tips Schwarzenegger off is when uh, the Predator started the Billy laugh. Because once he sets the detonator, you know, he starts uh, doing the Billy laugh. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, he does. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, Dutch decides it's time to time to break ditch. the fuck out of there. Time to ditch, Dutch. He gets to the yeah. chopper, but... uh he barely outruns a fucking mushroom cloud. Uh, yep. That thing is equipped with a goddamn nuke, a mini nuke. Uh, and then the, the last scene of the movie we get is uh, him kind of waking up on the chopper. Kevin Peter Hall, who played the Predator, is yep. playing the uh, is playing the, uh, the the pilot. And you see um, the the girl, what Elpedia Corellia, whatever her name is in the movie. Do they ever say her name in the movie, Lloyd? Did they, yeah, I do. I do have her name here. Hold on. It's not even super important. It's uh, just, I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm, I, she's I don't apparently know. the same character in the second movie. I don't know. I haven't seen the second movie in a long time, but they say that her, her she's also Anna in the second movie. Yeah, I've, I've, seen, Anna, too. I, yeah, Anna. I've seen the second movie more recently, and I, I, I would almost imagine I'd have, to, I'd have to watch it again. It would be a, um, a flashback because I don't remember her being in it at all, yeah. but. I don't know why she would have anything to do with it. It's in set in New York City, isn't it? Or uh, LA, yeah. LA. Yeah. Um, I did want to just jump back real quick to the whole thing you guys are talking about because every time I see this movie, when he's setting up the log rock and yeah. he's just putting that little twig into the notch, yeah. I'm like, if that was me doing that, <laughs> there's no way it would work on the first fucking time. Yeah. It would, it would, it would, it would initially, it yeah, would that, fucking fly out of there. Things break in, you're getting another twig. I'd have to get another twig. I'd have to fucking cut a little lower. I'd have yeah. to lift the log rock back up to a fucking 75 yeah. feet. Uh, all right. So that is, that's it. That's 1987's Predator for you 35 years this thing has been out for 35 fucking years 1987 had a lot of good movies we're doing a yeah, couple we got a we're few. doing a couple we did robocop which oh. will be coming out soon we did the lost boys for <laughs> for our patreons uh, which <laughs> lloyd's not a fan of uh uh real quick sean do you want to weigh in lost boys do you love it or hate it or are you in the middle I love it. I, I love Lost Boys. I think it's great. The sequel's not so much, but I, I love Le- Lost Boys. I think I think it's a great movie. All right, take that, Master. I'm uh, on an island. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it in terms of of it's also a great comedy movie as well, too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it, it definitely has has some really. It's it's an entertaining film. I'm yeah. a fan as well. All right. So 1987's Predator. Um, so there was two Schwarzenegger films this year, as Larry had mentioned before. I, I'm going Predator all the way, but I'll ask you guys as well. Uh, Larry, Predator or Running Man? You're thinking too hard on this, pal. I'm telling you right the fuck now. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go Running Man. Oh, mm. you fucking ah, dude! I love Running Man. I really do. It's such a fucking great movie. Oh, I'm so it's disturbed by you right now. So, so good. Plus, it's a Stephen King story. Come on. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Manster, the well, who loves Stephen King. Are you gonna say I the love same Stephen thing? King? Running Man is great. Richard Dawson says fuck. He but, does uh, say fuck. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm going Predator. If you ever want about seven or eight minutes of unadulterated uh what's the word? Uncomfortableness, <laughs> um, watch Richard Dawson just repeatedly kissing guests on the family oh, feud. Yeah, that's yeah. the worst. It's so hard to watch that video because because there's two different women out there. There's the women that are there who really want it to happen. And then the women that are there that don't want it to happen. But ba- like 1979 CBS was like, you're going to make it. It's oh, gonna it's going to happen. happen. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's so unnerving. <laughs> All right, Sean, uh, Predator or Running Man? Um, first <coughs> off, can I just touch back on the, the Richard Dawson? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, that we, I, I, this is just a really quick story. Um, years back, I, when I was in college, uh, and I first found out of the Game Show Network, uh, we were watching uh, Family Feud, and the guy that I was hanging out with, my weed dealer, um, he was uh, he was like, oh, he's like Richard Dawson the pervert. He kept always oh, Richard Dawson the pervert, and we just happened to be watching this this family, and they're introducing their themselves, and one of the guy's name is he goes, and he goes, what's your name, sir? And he goes, Cummer, and I swear oh. to God, Richard Dawson oh, goes, yeah. excuse me. And this is on national television. And I, I was like crying just the way he was like, he was so taken back by the fact that this guy's name was Kummer. Um, <laughs> but I like, and it, cause I mean, think about it, but um, I, I have a, I have a, a tendency to like dystopian stuff. So I'm going to go with the running man myself. I, I got to go with that. Wow. All right. All right. Two running mans. Two running men. I'm 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 weirded out by that a little bit more so for Larry. Sean, I just met you, so I'm going to give you some leeway. <laughs> Larry, Larry, I'm a little bit more. Although Larry, as we can see, has a Nightbreed poster on his wall, so we already know his tastes are suspect. But uh, that being said, <laughs> by the by the way, if you didn't know, Nightbreed is still playing at the Strand Theater from April of 2018. Uh, on, the Come version on, with the version with the 27 different endings. Yeah. Uh, hey, don't right. forget, I showed Predator at at the Strand. So. I try to forget that you showed Predator at the Strand. No, I'm kidding. So Larry, in his infinite wisdom, I think like Larry's been doing the, the shows, as we've talked about all the time, Larry does Connecticut Cult Classics. Go to ConnecticutCultClassics.com, check out the upcoming shows. At this point for this episode, I'm pretty sure I'll get this out before it came from 1988, uh, comes out, which is Killer Clowns from Outer Space and the Blob remake, which is going to be an awesome time. Larry has been putting mm-hmm. these shows together for as long as that's how I met Larry. They're always a blast. He always puts together really great shows, except for this one time. Uh, there was this one time that Larry decided to put as the headliner Predator, which I it was maybe, maybe my third or fourth show that I had gone to. And I did not see Predator in the theaters, um, and it is one of my favorites. So I could not wait to go see it. Unfortunately, Larry paired it with, um, you know, he essentially paired a fine steak with uh with with a bottle of fucking what is it uh <laughs> uh ketchup thunderbird uh 57 or something like that ketchup. uh yeah a fi- yeah a fine steak with um with ketchup and he he played a film called lady terminator which is a uh is that indonesian larry or is it from mars or what? indonesian it's an indonesian, indonesian terminator ripoff with a woman who's possessed by the south sea queen and you know, she just uh, kind of becomes the Terminator, and yeah, it's a good, it's a fucking great movie. Yeah, Indonesia. No. Yeah. We saw yeah. that on a Saturday night too, right? Yeah, it, it worked. Oh, out, it worked that. on the Saturday night uh, Facebook viewing because yeah. by itself, could it, the comment that was fun. You could do yeah. the comments, but man, leading into Predator, that was Dude, a tough one. That was Lady tough one Terminator there. is the funniest movie I've ever seen in a movie theater. Oh, oh, good Lord. Good <laughs> wow. Lord. All, right. All right. Let's get to rating this thing before Larry says something else that's going to confound me. So on Pine of Comics, we uh, we do the zero to five scale. Uh, mm-hmm. Zero, absolute garbage. Five, greatest thing ever. And quarter and half scale are usable, so you don't feel like you have to be locked into a, a whole number. Uh, let's start with the Manster today. And uh, let's find out what the Manster thought of 1987's Predator. Manster. Well, Predator is uh, full on action, right? Pure action cinema at its greatest. You know, we'd even mention um, the cinematography of this is fantastic. Oh, or uh, and the score. The, the score has score, to be mentioned. I mean, it's got that sort of jungle sound. It's intense. Really good camera angles looking up. Really awkward, weird angles. It makes it gives you the feeling of claustrophobia. Filled with uh, special effects and fucking just pure testosterone. You know, they just don't make them like this anymore. I would say uh, 4.5 out of 5. Wow. Spines, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right, Larry, uh, what do you give it? Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of Predator. Um, not as big a fan as Lloyd, apparently. Mm-hmm. But no, I am I am a fan. I love Schwarzenegger, especially mid to late 80s Schwarzenegger when he was really in his prime doing his best work like Running Man. But for Predator, I'll go f- four. Predator's a solid four for me. All right. All right. We'll go to Sean last. And that way, Sean can finish off by also talking about his website one more time, letting everybody know where to find it. Uh, for me, Predator is, uh, it's just, it's one of my favorite films of all time. One of my favorite action movies of all time. Uh, Alan Silvestri did the score. 
It's mm-hmm. super memorable. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, it's it's just it's a great score. Uh, he had done Back to the Future a couple years before that. I think that was Donkey Kong, but whatever. No. No, that was like during the ele- <laughs> the, the elevator scene. Bum, 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 well, that's whatever. where he got it from, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's to me, it's prime uh, Schwarzenegger. Uh, nothing gets better. Uh, I can watch this movie whenever it's a five. This is this is one of oh, my rare fives. Five. Yeah, I give this a five all the way. I, I love this movie. I love it to death. I'd marry it if I wasn't already married. So uh, five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they don't hear that enough. And I also I do want to point out one thing real quick uh, before we end the show is that uh, the the final credits with the kind of eighties um, television so style opening is so weird. Oh, right. Weird. We're all where like the main characters just all kind of look in the camera and give a thumbs up or yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, it feels like an 80s sitcom. It's they, so they, bizarre. They, 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 like, to Carl Williams. He's like, fuck Carl Williams. Uh, they just fucking. <laughs> oh, a, yeah. Carl, the truth <laughs> Williams. He was a boxer uh, to Carl Weathers and he catches the gun and like thumbs up. And I'm like, what? what's happening? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very bizarre choice. I read somewhere that they said, I guess the producer and the cast decided to do it as if like acknowledging and thanking the audience because like. Bill Duke takes a drink out of his out of his um flask and like you know nods to the audience, but it's still so weird for this movie. Um, all right, Sean HorrorNerdOnline.com. He'll tell you about it in a second. But what do you give Predator on a scale of five? I'm going to go with four and a quarter. If we're doing a, a quarter and a half, wow, I, I, I'm going to go four and a quarter. Um, it. I think that every single person who was in that movie was cast perfectly. You couldn't have done it with anyone else playing Blaine or Billy. Um, I think that, like you guys said, the score was great. The cinema, you know, I didn't even think about how good the cinematography is and how, especially in the scene when, um, when Billy finds the corpses in the beginning, um, the three, the, the three, like just the way the camera, you actually feel like you're there with him and it scares the shit out of you. Like if I rolled up in some tree and saw three, you know, filleted yeah. bodies, just I, 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 like he, they really captured that. And it's a, uh, like you said, it's, it's a movie I can watch anytime. If it's on TV, um, I'll turn it on. I'll watch it even with all like, you know, mother fudger or feather plucker, however they want to, <laughs> you know, center it out. Um, I'll, I can gladly, gladly watch it anytime. I, you know, it, and, 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 and it's, it's still got that comedic value too. Like you can add Arnold Schwarzenegger to anything and it's going to be funny just because he talks, you know, he's got that fun <laughs> accent. He's going to say something that we're all going to repeat. So I give this, and, and this movie's chock full of it. So I give this a four and a quarter. All right. Um, nice. As for Horror Nerd Online, yeah, it's a horror, horrornerdonline.com. Horror history, upcoming movies, upcoming premieres, releases, everything that's coming out. I'm um, getting back into doing reviews. I just wrote a very um, unkind review of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Why? Um, why? So, why? You so saw mean. it. Oh, dude, I, I, I talked to you the night I saw it. I was so upset. Um, any, anyway, uh, but yeah, horrornerdonline.com. Check it out and, you know, give us a like, follow us on Twitter. You know, we're everywhere. Uh, you like it's just at horror nerd online uh, at Twitter as well. Yeah, it's at horror nerd online, but because Twitter only allows a certain amount of letters, it's at <coughs> horror nerd online. There's no e at the end, so you kind of have to be creative. And, and so I, I was going to use a y as the as the i, but my wife told me not to. That would just confuse people even further. So. Right. All right. Well, we hope you come back, Sean. This has been fun. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, as from what Larry said, we're re- re- apparently replacing uh, you. Uh, for Shawnee Mac. So Sean uh, McLaughlin, sorry, but you've been uh, you've been let go from the pint. But you know, I don't know the ro- the fine. number the, the numbers on the episode we did on rope weren't that great to be honest with you, Sean. I've been meaning to talk to you for a while. So um, okay, <laughs> all I right, saw guys. Rope recently, I liked it. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's okay. fine. It's it, it. People are saying it was like the greatest Hitchcock thing ever. I don't know. I I haven't seen enough, but yeah, it certainly wasn't the greatest. All right, Manster, real quick, uh, tell everybody how they can find us. You could subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podcasts R Us, whatever. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ring the little bell there. Get your notifications. Go on Facebook and Twitter. We're at Pint of Comics. And on Instagram, it's at Pint underscore O underscore Comics. Don't forget Patreon. We've got a Patreon. Oh, and a Patreon. One on tier. $2.50 a month. 250. And uh, we'll get you all the extra content you can handle. Did you make oh, oh, so much content. So much content. There's been a lot of content. There's a lot of content. A lot of content. I'm not being being facetious. I'm saying there's a a lot. Are you getting defensive? I'm saying there's a lot of content. 
All right. It was just the way you said it. I think it was because of, I think because of my Nightbreed comment. Yeah, my my Nightbreed comment maybe pissed you off a little. I'm well aware of your poor taste in film, so (laughs) don't worry about it. I'm okay okay with it. I've come to terms with it. Nightbreed might even be like not just the like a bad movie. It might be the worst of Craig Sheffer's career, Larry. No, that's not true. <laughs> he was in Necessary Roughness. No, he wasn't. He was in the program. That's the program. Movie. The program. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, the necessary program. Roughness wasn't that like Jason Bateman and Ka- yes, uh, Kathy Island was in it. Yes, yes, Sinbad. Yes. Sinbad. <laughs> yeah. Sinbad. And uh, who? What's the guy? Scott Bakula. Guy from Quantum Leap. Yeah, yeah Bakula. 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 Yeah, and yeah. Robert Loggia as one of the coaches. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Oh, that's Terrible. An awful. That's an that, awful. that was Kathy Ireland as the place kicker, right? Yeah. 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 I have not seen that in a long time, and yeah, I'll when, keep I'll keep it that way. The dude, the dude from the other team, fucking smashes into her during the game. And he goes, "Welcome to football," and she runs up and she goes, "Welcome to foot balls." <laughs> Ball. <kicks him> <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> I was like, "How clever yeah. you guys are! Great writing, everybody." <laughs> Man, sir, let, let's leave it on that. Let's note. get out of here. See ya. See ya. Have a good night, guys. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off!